Hi everyone. I apologize for the quality being a little less than I would like. Unfortunately, I have to record on my laptop and I don't have the most well-lit environment, but we're going to go ahead and roll with what we have. Uh, so today, just to give you a heads up before I actually launch into demonstration mode, I am not in front of a classroom, uh, so I am going to be doing uh, very largely just a lecture, uh, and I am also going to be giving instructions for what we are doing, uh, as well as try to touch on some of the stuff that we've covered already. So let's go ahead and begin. Hi guys, great work the last couple days. So we have already talked about the importance of understanding what type of foods are specific to the vacation destination that we've chosen. That is very important as we've noted because there are local customs that kind of dictate the types of foods that we come across and those customs can affect how we travel through that region. Uh, so one of the examples that we brought up last class was how um, this sandwich, the Philly cheesesteak sandwich, sounds delicious, right? You have roast beef, you usually have grilled peppers, you have onions, and then you have the cheese. Now, if you are in any other state, any cheese will do. You could have a Philly cheesesteak with Swiss cheese, a Philly cheesesteak with Jack cheese, pepper jack, and anything is pretty much fine. But if you're actually going to Philadelphia, and you order anything but spray cheese, people will look at you strangely. And uh, just a reminder, or if you weren't here last class, uh, spray cheese is the cheese that comes in a can, like a whipped cream canister, and then you spray it across your sandwich. And uh, that is the most authentic way to enjoy that particular meal. Now, will it be the end of your vacation if you were to go to Philadelphia and not order a traditional Philly cheesesteak? No, but uh, since we are trying to practice authentic experience and authentic conversation and trying to really get in touch with the culture of the area, these little things are important to know. That brings us to today. So we've covered vocabulary regarding food that you might encounter. We've also talked about directions you might encounter as well as used our computer lab to explore different landmarks in the areas that we've chosen to visit. Now, I want us to dive back into our computer lab and we are going to start looking up language features that we should be very aware of when we get to where we're going. In past units, we've already talked briefly about accents and colloquialisms, so we know what those are. Um, an accent being that you're not changing a language, but you're instead adding different inflection to what you're saying. And then a colloquialism being uh, a sort of saying or slang term that is very local to a specific region. Um, colloquialisms basically refer to what we do in speech a lot of times. Additionally, we've also talked about idioms and Idioms are kind of these sayings that might make sense to a certain area, but not necessarily make sense to everybody else. Uh, I know that I've had idioms hang me up in the past when I've been traveling, and I have no doubt that all of you have been hung up on your own idioms at some point or another. Um, I always like to give the example of a friend that I had when I was in high school from Oklahoma. So my friend had of course heard the word dude, but she had never heard somebody actually use it in person. And I grew up in California. Dude was part of my everyday vocabulary. So when I said, hey dude, what's up to her, she didn't know how to respond. Uh, and just like she had never heard dude before, I had never heard the word fixin' used the way that she used it. When I say fixin', I actually say fixing, and when I'm saying it, I'm talking about repairing something. I'm fixing the television. I'm fixing the toaster. Uh, Elisa, my friend, on the other hand, would say, I'm fixin' to go make a sandwich, or I'm fixin' to see a movie. 
what she really meant by that is that's the thing that I want to go do. And that's really interesting because that's not how I would take that word. Since we are hypothetically going to be traveling, or if you decide to go to this destination, you'll actually be going to these vacation spots that we've chosen, it becomes really, really important for you to start to learn what these idioms and accents and colloquialisms might look like. When we get to the computers, you are going to have a couple steps to take in order to figure all of this out. The first thing that you want to do is to use Google or any search engine of your choice and start trying to look up any slang or idioms or accents or colloquialisms that are very specific to your vacation destination. That's step one. As you're looking through those, write some of them down. Afterwards, you want to take what you've written down and head to our good pal YouTube and see if you can find some videos of people using that type of language. Uh, the goal is for you to get as authentic a view as possible into what those words or phrases look like and sound like in action. And then finally, uh, we're going to partner up at the end of all this. And when we're with our partners, we're going to practice using those phrases together with each other. Uh, and it's totally okay to laugh. It's totally okay to have a little fun with it. Um, but the goal is that you can at least get a sense of what types of language you're going to encounter as you travel to your vacation destination. Uh, we'll be adding this to our projects that we've done already, and then on Friday we are going to present an entire um, portfolio, let's say, to the class of things we've learned about our place. Uh, so it's important that you take this seriously and get a handle on what language features you should expect because it may help you. It might also help your peers. If any of your peers end up going to this vacation destination, uh, you could be saving them some grief because we've always got to remember that when in Philly, eat the spray cheese. Thank you.